I have no idea why everyone on YouTube does that, but I figured I might as well join the crowd. I am really sorry it's taken this long to create this video, guys. I've actually been heads down building a prototype that I call Home X. We need to change our name. Oh, thank God. Yeah, praise the dark lord, that's great no. news. And today, I'm really excited to share with you guys the Home X satellite and the Home X server. These two devices work together to create a fully local, AI-powered voice assistant that can control your smart home. The Home X satellite is a Raspberry Pi with a matrix voice that actually has seven microphones on board capable of beam forming and audio echo cancellation. It even has an ESP32 on board with Bluetooth so you can run ES Presence to detect where your watches and your phones are in your home. And finally, I'm working on adding a millimeter wave sensor for human presence detection. The idea is that this could be a all-in-one voice assistant that does multi-sensors and human presence detection. On the server side, I'm running a Jetson Orin Nano, and I've added a 512 gigabyte NVMe SSD. And this is essentially a Raspberry Pi on steroids with a GPU. It runs a flavor of the Ubuntu operating system called Jetson OS. And on top of that is one Docker container that runs llama.cpp. And then I'm running the functionary LLM, which is capable of function calling over to Home Assistant to turn your devices on and off. So are you excited to check out this prototype that I've been building that I call Home X? All right, let's dive into it. OK, OK, hold on. So before we go into the demo, I have two requests for you guys. The first request is, do you or do you know somebody who has experience with rapid hardware prototyping or is a Python guru or a C guru or LLM fine tuning or has a bunch of access to GPUs? I need to talk to those people. Connect them to me if you wouldn't mind. The other request is, do you want something like this? How much would you pay for it? You don't have to send me any money. I'm just trying to figure out how much demand is out there. So check out the link below and then go and tell me what you think. All right, so let's jump into the demo. On the left here, we have Home Assistant and then the Jetson Oro Nano that I've SSH'd into. The first thing I wanna say is I didn't write up a detailed documentation on how to build all this yet. It's just, it's a little too early, guys. I'm still working with developers. We're working out bugs. And as soon as things start to congeal, into a documentable step-by-step -step process. I promise you, I'll give you everything you need to build it from scratch. Also, there is a way to build what I'm showing today if you don't have a Jetson or a Nano. Uh, so hang tight, we'll get into that as well. All right, if I go and look at my assist pipeline here, you'll see that I have a Jetson Nano pipeline. I am using speech-to-text running locally, also text-to-speech running locally. So everything is 100% local here. If we take a look at my prompt, you'll see that this is not an easy prompt. I'm specifying the name of the voice assistant, which I won't say out loud, the current time, the area for the actual voice assistant, so you can say something like turn on the lights and it knows that it's in a certain room and it just turned those lights on. I'm I'm passing in 30 devices, I'm passing in 20 areas, and three function calls, including all the attributes for all the devices. So this is a big blob of text that I'm passing to the LLM. Please keep that in mind. I'm not cutting any corners here. Let's go over and start up the actual LLM. Over here, you'll see that this is run.sh, which is really just Docker run, spinning up the entire Docker container with one command here. Now, for demo purposes, I'm already in the Docker container, so I'm just gonna spin up the the Llama CPP server. And you'll see that this is in fact loading the entire LLM, Functionary 7B V2.1 Q4, so quantitized four. You'll see that it's uh, passing it all into the GPU right now. It's currently running at five watts on the Jetson Orin Nano. And uh, if I go over and we'll use the browser first, I'll just say, uh, what time is it? So that text to speech, or sorry, speech to text that happened locally. So you can see it's now being processed on the server itself. The GPU is spiked. There's our response. Okay, cut, 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 cut. So through the magic of post-processing, I'm adding this clip in 24 hours after filming the original video. I have managed to get a lot of performance improvements from things like batching and loading the right number of layers into the GPU. I'm still trying to get caching to work, but the point is that there are lots of settings that I need to fiddle around with to get the optimal performance out of this setup. But uh, here's what we have so far. What time is it? 
All right, so pretty quick uh, speech to text. It hit our server, our GPU is spiking. Looks like we're hitting 11 and a half watts or so. It is currently 10.49 p.m. EST. There you go, so much faster. Let's take a look at that performance real quick. 1.52 seconds speech to text, 9.95 seconds for LLM, uh, super fast for text to speech. So now let's uh, make some requests that actually involve function calling and we'll, we'll do it through the actual HomeX satellite. Hey Jarvis, turn on the media room fans and turn off the media room LED ambient lighting. All right, so going back to the server here, our GPU is spinning up. Again, almost 12 watts or so. Um, and this makes, you know, it actually iterates in the LLM twice. So it goes to the LLM, it gets a text response, and then it realizes it needs to use tools, and then it does a second iteration, and then makes the calls. The media room fans have been turned on, and the media room ambient lighting has been turned off. Okay, cool. So yeah, the fans are on now, LEDs are off, and uh, let's go take a look at that performance. Uh, turn on the media room fans, turn off the ambient lighting. That actually should be ambiance lighting. So it's smart and it knows that I'm talking about another device probably. Uh, 1.5 seconds for uh, wake word, 1.59 seconds for speech to text, 25 seconds for the LLM, which is two round trips back and forth, uh, super fast for text to speech. So I still need to work on caching. I still think that there's a way that I could avoid the double round trips uh, for function calling. Um, the goal is to get this thing down to under three seconds. So even if I have to find new hardware, that is the goal for the product. I'll keep you guys posted. All right, cool. So those are good performance updates. Uh, thanks for the uh, post-processing edit cut. But this is 100% local. Could unplug from the internet and everything will work. Hey Jarvis. Where is Brad right now? And how many people are in the home? Brad is currently in the media room. There are a total of three people in the home. Great, that is totally accurate, actually. This LLM is, is good. Uh, it really feels pretty dang close to OpenAI 3.5 in the cloud. We just need to get better performance. And then obviously we need to like package this up so that you can pull it out of the box and plug it in and it just, everything just works. That is my mission. That's what I'm working on. All right, so let's try something else. I'm actually going to walk all the way over to the other end of the room. So the voice assistant is here. But uh, if I walk all the way over here, um, Hey Jarvis, who is George Washington? George Washington is the first president of the United States. Not bad, so even on the other side of the room, it can hear me. Um, if you play music really loud in the room, uh, it still has a little bit of difficulty hearing you, but honestly, if it's just TV in the background, it, it, it works. But we can do better with audio echo cancellation and beam, beam forming. All right, let's see if we can uh, think of a, another example here. Hey Jarvis, turn off the fans. So in this example, I didn't specify the media room fans because it knows that it is in the media room. There they go, they just turned off. The fans in the media room are now turned off. Right, so it has awareness as to which room it is in. And so if you walk into different rooms and you just say turn the lights on because you have a bunch of these satellites in your ceiling, it'll turn on the lights in that particular room. Hey Jarvis, turn on the home theater. The home theater is now turned on. So it executed the script, so home theater is turning on now. Okay, so now that we're done with the demo, let's dig a little bit deeper into the hardware. So I'm running a Jetson Orin Nano 8 gigabyte here. It's $499. Obviously, if you want greater performance, you can throw more money at the problem and get a beefier Jetson if you want to. They do claim that you could get an SD card, flash it, and then boot your Jetson Orin Nano. I did not have any success with that. It was a complete nightmare to get this thing to boot, if I'm being honest. Also, you don't want to run these AI applications or LLMs off an SD card. So you are going to also go need and invest in a NVMe SSD. I got this one for 50 bucks, 500 gigabyte. Once you have your Jetson up and running, you will then be able to go to Dusty's repo here and he gives you all these amazing containers to spin up your own LLM or stable diffusion or PyTorch. And you can just start 
playing with all the cool AI components that are out there today. What I've done is I've spun up Llama CPP Python. So this wraps a web server around Llama CPP and it will look just like OpenAI. So it's a competitor to uh, local AI, which I was using before. I, I struggled with local AI, I had to move past it. Ultimately, I ended up using Llama.CPP Python bindings and I was off to the races at that point. All right, so as mentioned before, I've tried a bunch of LLMs. I've found that Functionary is one of the best function calling LLMs out there today. And if you do not have a Jetson, you'll see that they give you a really simple command here to run a server v LLM and quickly spin up the functionary LLM on top of your PC with a NVIDIA GPU, for example. So fiddle around with uh, this server underscore v LLM and uh, maybe you can figure out how to run uh, something even cheaper than a Jetson or a Nano. I'd love to hear back from you guys if you're able to pull that off. It's worth pointing out that Functionary can do single function calls or even parallel function calls. So if you have multiple voice assistants across the room and you and your wife are talking at the same time, that it can handle two different people uh, hammering the LLM at the same time. Um, it has nested function calls, so it can you know iterate inside of itself. Uh, it even has chit chat. So you saw me earlier asking like, what is George Washington's birth date, for example? So it, it has general human knowledge built into it as well. Okay, and moving on to the Matrix Voice, the company does not exist anymore. Be careful, you've been warned. When you get this thing in the mail, if you buy one, it'll be a brick. You'll have difficulty even trying to get it up and running. The good news is that there is this project out here called ESP Home Matrix IO. So on the uh, Matrix Voice is an ESP32. You can flash that ESP32 with ESP Home Matrix IO, and you'll see that it has a dependency on another project out here built by a cool guy named Kanal. What's up, Kanal? Thanks for your help, man. And uh, this enables you to turn your Matrix Voice from a bricked device that came to you in the mail to actually something useful. So first you have to install all these uh, Matrix IO components onto the uh, Matrix Voice. Then you can actually run ESP Home for Matrix IO and you'll begin to actually see a new device show up in Home Assistant that looks like a voice satellite. Now, I wanna go beyond this because I, I still need to get ES Presence up and running with Bluetooth capabilities, and I wanna get the uh, Human Presence Detection Millimeter Wave Sensor on board, but uh, you can see the trajectory here and, and where I'm heading. All right, so there you go. Now you know uh, it's been a whirlwind of work late at night in between juggling family and full-time job. Uh, that is the Homex server and the satellite, at least the prototype. I would really love to know if you guys are interested in a product like this. I mean, imagine opening a box and, uh, you know, the server is just plug it in. It's already configured. The LLM is there. It has good performance and it works with Home Assistant. And then the satellite, you could put it up in your ceiling or you could mount it at like a 35 or 45 degree angle on your desk and uh, it does human presence detection, and it does Bluetooth detection, and it has a good microphone, and I would love to wake up each day and work with brilliant people and build this for you guys. Um, please go to the URL down below. Tell me if you are interested in something like this. That would be very helpful. Also, if you uh, ever want smart home consulting advice, uh, go to the website, futureproofhomes.net, schedule time, let's talk to each other, let's meet, um, and uh, I think that's it. Thank you guys very much. I will try and make a video, uh, you know, not in the next month, maybe in the next two weeks. Um, have a great rest of the day. Bye, guys.